So here's the deal. Um, this is Logan. Everybody say hi, Logan. Hi. hi, Logan. So Logan's been to how many DEF CONs? Two. 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 This is your second. This is my second. Second. So one and a, a third. Yeah. Yes. Logan's never spoken to DEF CON, so he's a DEF CON virgin speaker. And uh, we'll have to, uh, yeah, we'll be gentle. So here's the deal. Um, you used to come to DEF CON, and when you, we gave a talk, people in the audience were downright belligerent. Um, they were usually very drunk. Um, some of you may still be drunk, but aren't nearly belligerent enough, in my humble opinion. No offense to the goons who are trying to control this place. Yeah. There you go. So what I really want is a, is a proper DEF CON greeting for Logan, which is a big fuck you, Logan, all in unison. One, two, three. Fuck you, Logan. There we go. Welcome to DEF CON. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no pressure. So um, you, you going to stand for the whole thing? or? Eventually, just wait till the target's off your body. Um, painted them right there, so you know where to aim. The um, anyway, so I normally start most of my talks um, with the same random thing, which is don't believe all the random shit uh, that you hear when you come to a conference. And um, the same is true now. Uh, I think more than ever, you know, DefCon has become almost polite at times. We queue like British. Um, you know, we all stand politely in line with our tea and wait to get into a room, and then they switch the rooms. And we swear under our breath, and then we scurry off into other rooms or whatever. Um, but honestly, you know, it's, it, the, the undertone of the whole thing is the same, right? It's all about attack and defense, owning computers, defending computers, all that kind of stuff. People that get on stage, I've said it a million times, your ability to stand on stage here to talk like this is just a testament to your ability to socially engineer your way past the paper submission people, right? Like, I wrote a book, uh, or I started to write a book, and somebody had to pick up the pieces at the end. But... Um, <laughs> I wanted to do a book, and I thought, I'll do wireless security. I don't know dick about it. And um, I wrote up a little proposal, sent it to O'Reilly, and two weeks later, they FedExed me a contract, and I signed it, and I was suddenly an author. And I thought, well, I should buy some wireless cards and figure out how to secure these things. Um, <laughs> not a joke. This is really how it happened. Um, there wasn't a lot of due diligence involved in the entire process, so. <laughs> oh, I missed the flash and everything. That looked just retarded. So all right, um, here's the deal. Uh, oh, that one doesn't make noise. Um, <laughs> gaming is big. We're going to talk about computer games. Um, uh, you know, it's funny because I wasted the last two years of my life probably playing Team Fortress way more than I should have. How many people play Team Fortress? <laughs> how many people played the, in the Team Fortress tournament that we have? Uh, how many people knew there was a Team Fortress tournament? Yeah, a handful. Yeah, <laughs> lots of random questions. <laughs> how many people have a social security number that starts with two? <laughs> Um, anyway, so I encourage you, if you haven't played the Team Fortress tournament, even if you're not a gamer, please come by, because we really um, put a lot of effort into it. And we, we built a just big-ass crate. It was 1,100 pounds of gear that we shipped from Maryland to come to Vegas. Uh, we wrote a custom, or I didn't, these guys, Logan and a couple other guys wrote a custom scoreboard with Flex and Python and a bunch of other stuff to score it. We got real-time video. Um, and it's just kind of comical to watch, because a lot of people playing have never played, and they suck. Um, and so you can watch the real-time video, and they, their heads blow up into a billion little pieces, and we all giggle. It's great. Um, anyway, when we were thinking about what we wanted to do for DEF CON, we said, well, why don't we do something about gaming? Uh, you know, we're not in the game industry. That's not our native thing, but we do play a lot of video games, so by default, that makes us an expert. <laughs> I know how to configure a firewall, therefore I'm a security expert. Ooh, sorry. Um, so gaming's a big industry. Um, I don't need to go into it too much. Um, Rampage. Oh, there's a few of those, by the way. They originally were every slide. But it was decided that might have been a little excessive, so now it's every other slide. So at the end, we'll vote. Was it excessive, all the unreal and, and quake noises that you'll hear? Um, and and if, I hope that sincerely it wasn't excessive, because I really enjoy it, and I giggle every time I do this. Um, anyway, uh, uh, this is just number of concurrent Steam users each night. You know, they got 2 million people online. It's a big business. Um, unfortunately, it's not a big enough business for Black Hat. We were rejected. This talk was rejected. <laughs> because, quote, it wasn't business enough. So $47 billion industry does not, uh, you know, apparently make a business. So we're here instead talking to Black, or at DEF CON, bringing our A game, right? Woo, yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and, and by yes, we should preface this by saying we started setting up the Team Fortress 2 tournament yesterday morning. We um, started the first match at 1, and what really happened is... 30. 
1.30, he was still writing code, actually, for the scoreboard and everything today at 1.30 and continued to write code until I said, hey, dude, we have a talk to give in an hour and a half, and you actually looked at the slides yet, so you should probably stop coding. So anyway, we've been really uh, wrapped up in the TF2 tourney, so we apologize if this is a little rough around the edges. Monster kill, So we'll, kill, you know, kill, have some levity kill. with that. Um, here's the deal. Gaming, again, you know, not to, I wasn't trying to rag on Black Hat, but seriously, people don't view gaming as a business. They don't view it as something that warrants serious discussion, right? Although, arguably, everybody in this room plays video games. You all know 100 people that play video games. It's obviously a billion dollar, multi billion dollar industry. Um, but when we talk about uh, gaming, we talk about reviews of video games. Uh, we talk about industry analysts, you know, who's buying who and, and you know, what development studios are doing what, what now. Um, but we don't really talk about the security much. Right? We don't talk about the security of game servers and things of that nature. Um, you talk about it when there's money to be gained or WoW is involved, apparently, and the two, two edge cases there. Uh, maybe the potentially the same edge case. You know, How do you farm more efficiently and can you get people to do it and make money? Yes, okay, then we're going to care about cheating. But in general, cheating is just kind of marginalized and, and game server security is kind of marginalized as something that you know, it's just the, the really geeky people because apparently video gamers make computer security people look like normal, well-adjusted suit-wearing types. Um, Yes, they do. Yes, and we all, we all know. I love reading the Penny Arcade um, uh, um, uh, comics when they're like, you know, when you have online games and anonymity, it results in, you know, complete fucktards. You know, people that just leave all etiquette at the door, and, and that's apparently the gaming community. Um, what we're trying to do here um, is have a, a start, well, there's some, part, uh, some people that are having kind of public discussions about cheating and game server security. We're trying to help contribute to that community and also hopefully open the eyes of people that are here um, to you know, what's possible, what people are doing with respect to gaming security um, and cheating. People play a lot of different games. Um, what we're really going to talk about, we're kind of short on time, so I'm going to... Holy shit, 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 shit. That one's got a three? Well, it's every other slide, so that would be how many slides? Four. Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> yeah, there's a ball. all right. You missed, you were aiming for that guy. God. So, <laughs> um, I, I have the hard hat on, though, so I can just kind of duck and cover. Um, for the rest of this talk, what we're really going to focus on is the source dedicated server that Valve's released. Um, source has an interesting uh, past. It's, um, it's a platform that not only supports you know, Valve's needs, but unlike a lot of other uh, gaming engines, it's very customizable. It's very open, and they encourage people to um, you know, extend it and do things with it. Um, there's a huge number of source servers deployed worldwide. Um, the real reason we're talking about source is not because it's fantastically interesting, but we all play a lot of TF2, so it's what we know, it's what we're familiar with, it's what we administer every day. Um, source server and most of the other gaming servers have this fantastically interesting problem which is that you've got people on machines of all shapes and sizes with connections to networks of all shapes and sizes trying to play what boils down to a fair game, right? We're all trying to have a reasonable experience. It doesn't matter if you're on a P4 1.6 gigahertz on the ass end of a 256K uh, DSL line or you're on a Fios line with an overclocked i7, right? They want it to be fair and they want it to be enjoyable. And it turns out that's actually a really hard math problem. There's an awful lot of complexity. Holy shit! Very They're applauding for it over next door, yeah. <laughs> they think something else is going on over here. So, so um, you know, it, it's, a it, it's a fantastically complex piece of software um, because you have to provide basically real-time services um, and on a non-real-time operating system. So, um, and speaking of non-real-time, we run ours on CentOS, uh, which I don't know if you've noticed has had a little bit of an issue lately. Um, the main maintainers kind of gone AWOL and all the developers on the main CentOS.org page have posted an open letter of why this guy's an asshat. Um, and then there's like a little FAQ on the side like, no, CentOS isn't going away, that guy's just a jerk. Um, which is not something you want in your enterprise operating system, like on the main page. You imagine like going to Novell and seeing on their main page, it's like, oh, the CEO's a dick. <laughs> you know? Let me install that, where are the disks? Bring it on. Um, so, you know, Linux by nature is not RTOS, you know, it's not real time, but uh, these game servers have to somehow make these operating systems behave appropriately. They have to deal with all the data coming to and from the clients and, um, and basically make a fair game. So it, it um, you know, they control cheating and all this other crap. Really, it's an amazing piece of software that you get for free to run a server and do your own thing. And people get Valve untold amounts of shit for it. Like, I don't know how many people, I, who here administers source servers? Anybody? A handful. You got some of the source admin mailing lists. Like, 
people, I mean, there's public mailing lists on there, people just slagging on Valve all the time. I'm like, are you serious? Like, these guys give you, you know, millions of lines of code for free to do this stuff and form your own communities and whatever. Like, cut them some goddamn slack. Like, TF2, it's two years after it was created, and people, they still support the game. They're still adding new pieces. You know, most games that you buy, you're lucky if you get a patch when it's broken, right? Valve still supports the thing, it still adds functionality. So God bless Valve. Yay, yay. I want to throw that in in case any of their lawyers get upset about this talk. I find it's always nice to stock them up first. And so by this time, the lawyers are kind of tuning out like, oh, they're speaking nice about us. We'll just hit stop. Um, so the one thing that's interesting, and we kind of found out after the fact, and I, I'll, I'll admit to being kind of an idiot here, um, that when we first started, <laughs> We first started looking into this, we, uh, we were like, well, it's a lot of binary, man. So I guess we're going to just have to disassemble and reverse engineer this thing. And it's big. I mean, a lot of libraries get hooked. All kinds of crazy shit happens. So we've got debuggers run in, and I'm trying to like just get a high-level view of the code and what's doing what. He's like, dude, you know if you go into Steam, you can just download the source code. <laughs> I was like, no, actually, I didn't know that. That's why I had a debugger open. <laughs> shit. <laughs> so... <laughs> Yeah, just because I can't doesn't mean I should, absolutely. We went waste wasted a fair bit of time. Because they had like anti-debugging stuff in there, we're subverting that, moving our way around. It was ridiculous. Um, anyway, what, what's interesting is um, all the code base that they expose are like the game rules, object interaction, that kind of thing. So you basically build your own video game um, out of the source engine, which is really interesting. The one thing from a security perspective that's a pain in the ass is they actually don't release the source code for the stuff that we would actually care about. So there's stuff that happens where you know, you're doing something with an object in the game. And what, in a nutshell, what happens is that data about what you've done to manipulate it, for, as an example, will get serialized and sent across the network to the server, or the server will take and serialize something and send it to the clients, vectors of who's moving where and all this kind of stuff. But it's all just a bit stream, right? So what happens is, is in the source code, you'll see, and then serialize it and send it to the network. And then you just call this magical function. And that magical function only exists in object code. <laughs> yeah. That source code doesn't exist. Um, and we discovered that after digging through many, many lines of source code. So then we went back to where we started. And by that point, we had to get ready for the TF2 tournament and didn't make as much progress as we wanted to because of basically we're idiots. Um, head nodding. That's where I can, he's, he's, he doesn't want to use the mic. He's like, yep, we're dicks. Um, so anyway. Um, Headshot. That one's not really important. Uh, Pong, I love this thing. Pong, why was Pong successful? Because everyone could grasp the concept. It had eight words in the front. Avoid missing the ball for high score and insert coin. That was the entire premise, right? Not complicated. Even drunk people in a bar could put a quarter in and play. Woohoo! Even drunk people in a bar can play TF2. Why? There's two colors, right? If you're on the blue team, you kill the red team. If you're on the red team, you kill the blue team. Sometimes there's this abstraction. There's capture points and flags and stuff. They don't matter. That game's fun because people blow up, right? <laughs> you find people the opposite color of you, you blow them up. Woohoo! And then you start calling them names and whatever. Um, there's also some fantastic work that they did on the art direction. Um, and if you want to grab this um, talk later, um, just for that URL alone at the bottom, it's, a, it's a, like a two hour long discussion on the palette choices and all the weird um, rendering stuff they had to do to get the feeling for you know, the, the kind of 50s style cartoony bits of TF2 that they wanted to get. Um, they put a lot of effort in the game. I have a lot of respect for them. I sound like an Apple fanboy, except I'm a Valve fanboy right now. Um, this is not important. Um, there's a lot more Impressive. slides. Thank you. A lot more slides. The server has remote administration. Like, you know, SSH, except not encrypted. Um, <laughs> basically, it's just uh, remote console commands. You s send a password and the uh, uh, command that you want, want, and it changes it. And this is everything from changing levels to low-level rate manipulation um, to, you know, enabling cheats and doing all kinds of other stuff. So um, it, it, it's just wide open. There's also rate limiting that you can do because they know it's unencrypted. They know it's difficult to control. Um, so they try to rate limit, you know, how often you can connect. They have this nasty history of having bugs that if you try to connect to the Archon console too many times, it just crashes the server anyway. It's a cute DOS, you know. Um, and they, they resolve it, and then they keep bringing that bug back. I think it's one of their favorites, apparently. Um, the one thing about Archon Access is it's damn near equivalent to Shell Access. You can uh, save files wherever you have access to save files in the file system. Um, if you get really cute, you can uh, execute code even. So, you know, your Archon password is you know, like any other password, a very bad thing. But it's amazing the number of places you go online where you read about, like, game servers and people are having permissions problem. And you know what the answer is? Run it as root! And I'm a big fan of running as root. I don't know how many people have seen the website with the petition, like, you know, real men run as root. You know, Chuck Norris ran as root. Um, <laughs> 
So um, I'm a big fan of that, but when it comes to like millions of lines of random gaming code, eh, maybe a jail is kind of prudent thing, you know, <laughs> just a hunch. Um, anyway, uh, they have plugins too. This is actually kind of neat. So if you want to interact with the engine directly, um, you can do, uh, um, you can write plugins that hook all these public APIs that they have. The problem is some of the APIs are pretty complex, so people have written kind of abstraction layers to allow lay people to write reasonable plugins to do, uh, you know, total gameplay modifications or just administrative functions or something like that. Real popular one that we use and we're using on the server um, in the TF2 room is uh, MetaMod with SourceMod. And, and again, this is layers of abstraction on top of APIs, right? Again, we don't... We didn't do a lot of research into this, but one can assume when you start abstracting things like that, there's a long history in the security community of shit going wrong. Um, you know, and there's, there's a history of uh, security issues with met, uh, MetaMod and SourceMod and people enabling things that they shouldn't and things being opened that they shouldn't and things of that nature. So, um, you know, this is, it's a big extensible system is the lesson of the story. Um, and what it results in... Dominating. ...is why we're all here. I, we have some, the female ones are better than the male ones, in my humble opinion. Um, always is um, cheating, right? And, and that's one of the, pretty much the big focus that we're gonna uh, talk about today, um, is really trying to control cheating. Um, there's ways to cheat that are idiotically simple, and there's ways to cheat that are fantastically interesting um, and you know, would make for actually probably a good black hat talk. Someone should submit something. Um, ha -ha. Uh, yeah, oh, hey, I'm sorry, I did make an assumption there, sir. No, it's, it's a good DEF CON talk, you're correct. Damn it. Wow, that was bad. <laughs> I missed that by like a foot. Um, so here's what I'm gonna, I'm gonna demonstrate a real simple one. Um, you can just replace sound files on the computer to have different effects, right? And you would think, what difference does a sound file make? Well, there's a class in Team Fortress 2. For those, how many people have actually played TF2? I'm sorry, raise, raise your hands. Number of people. Holy shit, a lot of people. So in general, uh, for those that haven't, there's nine classes in TF2, and they all have different capabilities. One of them's the spy. Um, and the spy can become invisible and sneak up behind you and then become visible as a team member from your team and then stab your ass in the back and you die. No questions asked, right? There's no, oops, I didn't kill you because I didn't stab you hard enough. It's an instant death. So they're really assholes. Um, and so anything that you can do to prevent the spy from being an asshole is viewed in general as a plus except for by the people that are playing spy. So what you can do is um, they make little subtle noises when they uncloak. And so here's, here's the spy uncloaking. Is that playing? No. There we go. And to listen very carefully. You hear that whoosh? That was him cloaking. And then uncloak. And then you die. <laughs> Right? So that's, and, and when you're in a game with 24 people and there's stuff blowing up around you, you don't hear a little whoosh. You know, that's not, not a fanciful sound. It, it, you just get stabbed. Impressive. In the back. Thank you. Um, here we go. So this is, um, this is with a slightly different sound to give the player a little bit of an advantage. You'll hear the whoosh. Here it comes. Here's the whoosh. There we go. And then here's the new sound. I'm the scat man. <laughs> so, so that one is, um, <laughs> and it's funny because I gave this talk at Donacon, um, not this talk, but a, a, kind of a, a variant of it that was focused more on administration. And um, I had made this demo on my main gaming rig, and but I left that sound in. So I've been playing with that sound on forever. And some dude like called me on it, like on some server the other day. He's like, "Gee, Dad, you have really good hearing." <laughs> and I'm like, "Yes, that's exactly it." <laughs> Shit, I'm that guy. Uh, um, other things you can do, there are certain materials that um, uh, will, will show through walls. Um, it, like I've, I've made some maps um, just to um, play around. You can make maps through the editor. Uh, and my kids actually made a map, and they used all these decals on the map. And, and you can see the decals all the way through the entire level, regardless if there's a wall in front of you. Um, and they loved it. And so there's like this level, and all it is is just decals everywhere. And you have no idea how far away they are because they're like at a wall that's 100 feet away. So you're just bouncing into things because all you see is these decals that go through. So certain materials will show through uh, walls and things of that nature. So um, here's a, a demo of certain materials, say people's clothing and their skin has been changed so you can see through walls. Um, let's just say it gives you um, a little advantage. 
guy's on the blue team. He sees red people come in down this hallway to his right, knows who he, the class they are, knows how many they are, sees them completely. I mean, this is just fantastic bounce of information, right? This guy knows where everybody is on the other team. Um, he, so he dies, sees all his own team members through walls, runs across, sees people all over the place. You know, this is an obvious kind of cheat, right? <laughs> um, it's just carnage. Anyway. There's nothing really funny about this except for the fact this guy just mows everyone down. Um, you notice their heads are a different color um, because you can actually, uh, and Logan gets into this, there are bots that you can have that will focus on certain colors that are on the screen. And when the bot sees that pink color, it just aim there for you. So, yeah, it's, it turns out it's really useful. Um, Dominating! Whoa, that was loud. <laughs> Shit, that's funny. It keeps getting funnier. That's the part I love. Um, so how do you stop this? Um, th I mean, seriously, it's child's play, but it completely changes the nature of the game, right? Like when you're playing on a server, um, I've, I've been on servers where I've had either a bad day or some guy was really cheating, and it's not fun. Like, honest to God. And when games stop being fun, people stop playing them, people stop buying them, and game companies lose money, right? There are lots of games who started out kind of fun, but for whatever reason, people just didn't get into it, or there was a lot of cheating, and people... Well, was, was that Unreal Tournament? Yes. <laughs> yes, yeah, UT. Yeah, my favorite thing about UT, how many people played Unreal Tournament? You know, and they have the bots. Okay, and uh, how many people have seen the Penny Arcade comic where, like, dude doesn't realize that they're bots and is talking with them and, like, talking smack to them and whatever? <laughs> I first got Unreal Tournament, I did that. <laughs> I was on a server and I'm like beating the hell out of these guys and suddenly some dude joins and I'm like chatting and whatever and he's like, guy, those, those are all bots. I'm like, really? <laughs> I've been here for an hour. <laughs> and then I read that Penny Arcade and I'm like, uh, Jesus, <laughs> apparently this is like an endemic problem, you know? Um, anyway, so how do you control this? Um, so the server can implement this thing called SVPure. So there's all these variables that get set with the server that control how the server acts in this one. Uh, SVPure basically is a way that Valve tries to control these client-side cheats, these really simple yet highly effective cheating mechanisms. Uh, by default, it's SVPure is zero. You turn it to one, and it scans for um, some sounds, some models, and things. You know, basically the stuff that I showed you would be caught um, with SV1. Um, some cu custom contents allowed. People use sprays, like little things, images that they can put on walls and stuff to say like their clan was here or whatever. Um, and custom materials, uh, certain things can be whitelisted on the server side. So this is a real flexible way to control that. SV2 uh, is basically, I'm gonna scan everything that you possibly could change, and if you did change it, then I'm not gonna allow you to join the server. There's a couple problems with this. One, it increases load time, right? It's basically an antivirus scan. It's chugging along, rawr, 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 and it's already, I mean, Seriously, it, it takes a while to load TF2. Like, no screwing around. A lot of these source-based games take a long time to load. I've got an uh, uh, SSD at home that I use basically just for loading TF2. <laughs> it's fast. And I get really pissed off when I get back in a regular spindle because it takes so long to load the game. Um, the other problem with it is it uses CRC32. Um, which arguably we know how to subvert, right? <laughs> like, like, we've handled MD5 pretty well. I think we can do CRC32 in our sleep. Like, there's probably like an option on like the Microsoft calculator to like subvert CRC32. <laughs> so it's not a real security mechanism. Um, but again, it stops the ankle biters. It stops idiots like me from just replacing the spy on cloak sound without making the wave file match the original CRC32 checksum. Um, so there's obviously some limitations of what you can do when you're just searching and replacing um, you know, these skins and these sounds and that kind of thing. If you want to automatically control your player, uh, you want to automatically aim, shoot, that kind of thing, um, you have to actually look under the hood of the source server, and that's what we're going to go into next is some lower level cheats of how people manipulate sor uh, the source engine. Um, Dominating! So that one wasn't even funny, right? I mean, it was just, no. Oh, okay. it was, was it the same as last time? Wait till you get to his slides. They're all the same. No, no I changed them for you. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> this was his quote, I think all my slides when they flip say perfect, return, 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 that's because they are. It was sarcasm. It was sarcasm, yes. He used eight point font, by the way. <laughs> Oh, I had to change that. Um, anyway, so what, one thing that Valve uses is uh, uh, Valve Anti-Cheat. It's called VAC. A lot of you that play Valve games are familiar with this. Um, what this thing really is, is again, it's a, relative, it's a more sophisticated antivirus program, if you will, except it's not looking for malware, it's looking for changes to the source engine. Um, it unfortunately isn't that good. It's not a behavioral analysis, it's not the holy grail of anti-cheat. It's looking for basically blacklisted bad stuff. 
You know, someone wrote a cheat, someone found out the cheat, sent the information to Valve, Valve figured out how it worked, Valve writes a little rule somewhere, gets caught up in VAC, and then anyone who's found using that gets banned for life um, through VAC. It's pretty simple. It's effective at stopping stuff that's in wide deployment, but it's not effective in stopping people who are willing to take a cheat, change it a little bit. Um, you know, it's just like modern day networks, right? Right? We've got antivirus that's great for commodity viruses, but you change that one little bit and you can go own an entire enterprise. Right? That's how it works. I mean, I'm dealing with enterprises all the time right now who have massive problems because someone recompiled a binary with like one little change or repacked it or whatever, and it magically it flies through all the security protocols and pops everything. Whoopsie! You know, same problem with Mortal Kombat reference. Um, no one plays Mortal Kombat anymore. No, no one. God, that was like my high school. Um, anyway, so. Here's, what, uh, here's where we're going to turn it over to Logan, and he's going to talk about uh, other things. I still have a microphone. Great. <laughs> so I, I started looking at the uh, Darkstorm source. It, uh, actually, first I started going down the line of writing my own cheat, and then I found the Darkstorm source, fortunately, because uh, these things are really, really complicated. Not only do you have to know how to do uh, common hacker techniques such as DLL injection and you know process injection and all that stuff but you have to know DirectX and vector math and it's 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 impressive what these guys can do and and Darkstorm is just one example of basically a cheating toolkit that is out there right there's lots of people out there that have cheating toolkits some of them are publicly available like Darkstorm uh, others are available only to you know friends of friends and that kind of thing like the carding industry or whatever you know if you know someone you can get in you get to cheat um, because the cost of failure here for all these guys is the same if their cheats are found out they become worthless right and you can't cheat anymore and they're not cool um, and so Darkstorm is a good example of one that's uh, pretty extensible and pretty flexible um, and we got some examples from it but again we didn't write most of this this is just you know stuff we took from Darkstorm we're using it as an example of this is how it works this is how people get past VAC um, and inject themselves into these uh, programs Perfect. Told you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the first step in uh, loading a cheat that is going to inject into the process is naturally injecting it. Uh, we do this through standard injection techniques, uh, get the process ID, allocate space in the in this address, uh, virtual address space, and then create your remote thread and kick off you know, every function you want to hook inside of there. Uh, it does a couple things. Well, there are a couple different ways you can hide from VAC, and this particular cheat employs one of them, uh, removing the PE header, that's it. But while I was looking around and analyzing some of these other cheats, uh, you, can, you can do a lot of different things to, to hide yourself. The, um, the linked list one, I think, is, is, is an interesting one. I, you should tell them about that one. It's, that's a standard virus technique to remove yourself from the, uh, from the linked list that describes all the modules that are loaded in a particular process. Um, and VAC will go through and you know, they'll, they'll look at that and that's how they'll get their list of uh, modules to, to analyze and take a signature of. They also use the PE header as a starting point to start their signatures too. So effectively removing your PE header hides you from VAC and it is almost impossible for VAC to start scanning your memory space. Perfect. Oh, I changed him, really. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like I said before, this is pretty much the only, um, the only hiding technique that Darkstorm employs. Uh, pretty standard. Grabs the, grabs the image header and just nulls out the, uh, nulls out the bits that say, I'm a PE. All right, and then the first thing we need to do is undo some um, <clears throat> undo some flags that, that say that we can't call certain functions because these functions um, Valve considers protected, and they know they know that you could they could be used in order to to cheat. And so we go down the line of this uh, pvar struct and just flip bits, and that's basically what's happening right here in this loop. Monster kill, 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 kill. And uh, this is the first. It got funny again. It's like Family Guy, right? Like it starts out. 
Oh. Okay, y'all got it. I don't even nice. need to explain it. <laughs> um, all right, so the first function that we hook is called create move. Um, it's pretty, pretty well named because it is, the, it is just your move with the character. Every tick of the game, this function is called. And there can be you know, 30, 40 ticks a second that happens. So every time a tick happens, we call this function and we start down our line of you know, what do we want to do to cheat. Aimbot. I'm sure, I'm sure most of you know what an aimbot is. Um, unfortunately, there's no video of an aimbot because uh, Valve released a patch and uh, removed a particular function that was used by this aimbot to aim. So it, it would have taken a considerable amount of work to emulate that, that function and get it working again. Didn't have the time because of the TF2 tourney. <laughs> Yeah, we have to have an excuse, right? It's not because we're lazy or just dumb or anything. It's something else going on. Rampage. All right, so here's a basic premise of how it works, though. Um, you grab your list of entities, entity being anything on the board, anything that is moving or stationary, and you just go through an if statement and say, is it a player? Is it not me? Is it solid? Are they on the other team? Yes, then grab, my, grab where I am, grab where they, are, where they are, and give me a vector. Aim my vector, aim my position in that direction, and if I'm aiming at the right portion of their body, fire. Five to choose from, but I don't know anybody that chooses anyone but the head, seriously. The speed hack, so this one is, um, is actually pretty deductible on a lot of servers. People have written a lot of, uh, a lot of plugins to, to perform the security that, that VAC doesn't, which is kind of strange. I mean, you, we were talking about source mod and meta mod before. There's, a, um, there's, a, there's like a, a serious plugin that's written by a guy named Kaigen, um, which, which defeats a lot of these cheats. So um, while I was going around on just getting experience cheating, I don't, I don't cheat normally, is, is evidenced, and you'll see in a second in the videos. Um, I was worried that, that some of these servers would have been employing this, uh, this mod, and I was going to be caught, but apparently they weren't. Um, so the speed hack, real quick, it just, it just sets a CVAR, which is a console variable, variable inside of um, SRCDS, which says, what is, what is my host time scale speed? And you can set it between 1 and 25. Um, you don't want to go above seven because you can't move. It, it's too fast. It's just insanely fast. Um, seven's about right. So if you, you know, if you're playing with this, seven, seven is what you want to do. Humiliation. <laughs> no pressure. No pressure at all. Rapid fire. So there's a couple characters in the game that have pistols. And basically, you can flip a bit, and your pistol turns into a chain gun. And that's, that's exactly what happens right here. It just comes in, sets the bit to fire, and you go to town just mowing people down. This works really well with the um, constant criticals cheat, because when you have a chain gun that's just shooting criticals constantly, it hurts people. <laughs> uh, and ESP. So ESP is... Um, it's just what you think it is, ESP. You're getting information about targets uh, from a distance, you know, just like you're finding out stuff about their class, their hit points, what weapon they're holding, and you can see it through walls. So there's a good example. Um, well, real quick how it works. You're basically taking the model that's drawn on the screen for source or SRCDS, and you're appending these, um, these values to it, and so you'll see in the next picture what happens. Double kill. If you can see that pretty well, but that's that's basically based on the the weapon he's holding. That's a scout on the other side of the wall, and I know he's at full full life. So that's that's what ESP does for you. And uh, I think we got a video. Oh yes, can I annotate this video for you? This is my favorite. <laughs> so Logan, if I wait, if I say no, will you not? No, no, it's not. It's not an optional problem. <laughs> <laughs> so. 
Um, I, I need to stand up for this because this one makes me laugh. I actually almost fell out of my chair when I first watched this video. Logan doesn't cheat a lot. Um, and so uh, imagine, if you will, you're playing a game and someone shoots you from across the room and you have to respawn. You're going to go back and look and see if that person's still there, right? Because you don't want to get shot again. Well, Logan has ESP, so he knows where everybody is. But yet, he's still looking where there's no one there because he's so worried he's going to get shot in the head. So... First, he's going to get dominated by... Boogie Girl. Boogie Girl. Okay. So Boogie oh, Girl just I'm dominates old, him. Sorry. I'm old Greg, by the way. And so now he's going to round the corner, and he's got ESP, so he knows where everybody is. Boogie Girl was on the roof, and now Boogie Girl jacks him in the head. <laughs> Same person. Now he's really scared, okay? He doesn't want to be embarrassed again, because he knows this is going to show up at DEF CON. So he's a sniper, and he rounds the corner... And he looks up there, and there's there's no one there, right? There's no ESP information, but he's still he's still looking up there. He's really <laughs> worried that maybe she's got a cheat that disables the ESP and shoots him in the head. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. And then he have at it. Yeah, he, he does have a redeeming shot up here in a minute. Um, I have a couple. Come on, give couple. me some credit. Well, I mean, you were able to pull the trigger successfully. I'll give you credit. Uh, Thanks. <laughs> I don't know if there's a way to fast forward this or not. This gets kind of boring. I, I mean, but in general, you get the idea. Oh, here he goes. This is a good part. Yeah. So the scout was coming behind the wall, saw him coming the whole time, and he actually managed to hit him in the head. That was good. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, not a pro yeah, see? I'm cordial. Damn it. <laughs> um, so obviously, this is a lot of information. You can't see through the walls. You can't see exactly the characters, but you actually still get the character information through the walls, what they are, how much health they have. That kind of thing. So um, it's a fantastically useful cheat uh, you to control, you know, at least know where everybody is. That's probably good. Hold on. Just a second. One more. One more. <laughs> there you go. Good job. Okay. Ten? Ten. Killing spree. All right, constant criticals. So this this is pretty useful, but at the same time, it's kind of a kind of a bane because the way that it happens, um, there's not there's not just a magic bit that says every shot you're gonna make is gonna be a critical. We actually have to try and compute um, our probability for a random shot or for I'm sorry for a critical. And on every tick of the game, we try and see if our next shot's gonna be a critical, and if it is. If we're, if we're pressing the button, then we fire. So this can result in some lag time. So sometimes you'll press the button and nothing will happen. And sometimes you'll press the button and two crit rockets will come out. Um, so it's, it's interesting and there's a video to go along with it also. So for those that don't know, a critical is basically, it's the same shot as another kind of shot, it just has, does more damage, like 50% more damage. Um, and in TF2, they also are lit up, and they're a different color. So it becomes kind of abundantly obvious, because normally you get one about every five to 10, and if you start shooting like 20 in a row, <laughs> it's really obvious. So what you'll see Logan here doing in a minute is shooting in different directions in different places, just so not everyone sees the fact that he's just unloading critical rockets over and over and over and over. I was pretty worried that uh, my own team was gonna turn me in for cheating, <laughs> even though it was helping them out, but they didn't, so that was a good thing. Twice? Twice. Oh, it's like a critical. You hit the button and nothing happens. Woo. Don't make me come up here. Wow. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, no video. Impressive. <laughs> oh, it gets I would, I would just keep moving. Okay. <laughs> All right, so uh, then there's a, then you can do a thing called a wall hack. So this will, um, this will basically draw the materials on the models in the game, but it sets a certain value. These values down here, uh, sorry, these values right here, when um, I set materials flag is called, and that it sets the Z index to something different than the wall. So whenever a character is displayed on the screen, you see it instead of the wall. You can, you can see that pretty well there. There's the, the demo man. He's sitting right there, obviously behind the wall, but I can see him, and I know exactly where, you know, what direction he's facing and what he's doing. There's also a bunch of stickies right there. That's part of uh, ESP. 
dominating. And no scope. So I don't know if you guys noticed when I was um, when I was in the video back there, but normally when you're a sniper, a sniper, you have a you have a scope, and uh, your scope looks like that, the one on the right. That is, the one on the left is what happens when you execute this code and remove the materials for all four corners of the scope. It's a it's a huge advantage as a sniper being able to run around zoomed in and see, you know, 100% of the world. Rampage. You want me to tackle this? Or you got yeah, that's actually the end of the uh, dark storm. So okay. Gonna... Switch. All right, a couple of things real quick. Um, one, SRCDS will log um, just like anything else. Um, and what's interesting about the logging is that there's a, a lot of uh, third-party products that will pick up the logs and um, display like how well you're doing, how much you kick ass, whatever. Um, and you go to web pages, uh, HL Stats, HL Stats X, or some of the, the more well-known versions of that. Um, anyone can write code to do that, and there's lots of third-party uh, logging and log analysis utilities that are out there, including the ones that we wrote, which turned out were ripe for SQL ejection and DOS attacks. Uh, <laughs> because what... Are you out there, Peter O'Toole? P no. Uh, there's a guy who, was he at ShmooCon? Yeah, he was at, oh, he got me at ShmooCon. At ShmooCon, he had a character in his, um, in his name that uh, killed our parser outright. Um, and Logan fixed it and then inadvertently commented that code out um, and then brought that code to DEF CON and same dude showed up and uh, crashed our parser again. Um, which is kind of, kind of a cute trick to have it happen twice with the same guy. Um, it, you know, it, it's basically, you know, this is standard stuff, right? It takes data, it's going to parse it with a language, Perl, Python, whatever, it's going to shove it in a data, database, so it's ripe for issues like SQL in injection. Every once in a while, I'll see somebody running around on a server with, you know, Robert semicolon drop tables as his name. <laughs> oh, it's little Bobby tables, you know. It's just the greatest thing ever. And like three people get it and everyone else like, who's the dick with the name? And meanwhile, like, I don't know how many, it, it, it's amazing the grasp of extended ASCII characters that gamers have. Like, I can't type in a backwards RF, but sure shit, apparently, like, ASCII, like, you know, 212 is that thing. And some entire clan has that as their clan tag. Like, I, screw off, I know how to do it. That was another problem we had, extended ASCII. Yeah, barfed a lung on that stuff. Um, I think even today we still just basically drop it, right? Yeah, we just ignore it. So if you have a fancy clan tag that doesn't have regular ASCII, fuck off. Um, <laughs> meant that in the nicest possible way, five minutes, yes. I think she might have thrown me out for other reasons. Um, real quick, uh, so there has to be code releases because we're here at DEF CON, so um, unfortunately we didn't have a lot of the security relevant code that we wanted to have uh, to release here. Um, partially because we did get so wrapped up with this, but one thing we wanted to do is turn back to community all the scoreboard and parsing uh, stuff that we have for the real-time stats tracking, um, for the streaming video and all the other stuff, so, um, and team signups and the whole deal. So if anyone runs LAN parties or anything, there's actually a lot of code here that'd be very useful uh, for you, so that'll be available on the No Moose uh, website um, here shortly. We have version one up there right now, but version two will be released um, after DEF CON, since Logan, I think, is still writing said code. No, no, it's done. Oh, it's done? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You sure? I'm taking your editors away and we'll see what happens. So, um, Oh, and, and at some point you can go to our website and look at the hokey video setup we had for ShmooCon, which involved two transcodings, and I shit you not, an audio loopback cable. For those that don't know, that's a really short headphone cable that goes from audio out to audio in. Uh, <laughs> that's how we're capturing the audio. Yes, yes, that's exactly, yeah, it's idiotic. Um, so there was another release I was hoping to have, which was a Wireshark protocol dissector, um, which was going to dig around and figure out all the uh, innards of the uh, uh, source protocol stuff. Uh, put in a bunch of work doing that, and unfortunately what I've got so far written um, is basically I can, I can see the first uh, two 32-bit um, counters that are little endian. What? <laughs> um, and uh, I can find the strings that are all in there in uh, TLV format. Uh, so it parses all that stuff out, but it doesn't get all the vectors of who's moving where yet. I'm still trying to figure out all the serialized stuff. I hope to have that done actually this year. It's still a project I'm working on, but um, it wasn't done by this point. And if anybody's interested in helping out, feel free to let me know. Uh, one last. Humiliation. Yes. Uh, one last thing. ShmooCon 2010. Woo! How many people here have been to ShmooCon? Hot diggity. 
Uh, for those that don't know, ShmooCon is a uh, security conference that the Shmoo Group uh, puts on in Washington, D.C. every year. Um, it's been the same place for the last five years. There have been no more. Uh, we've had people come up and tell us, like at ShmooCon 4, that they've been to all six. Um, apparently, it was so good. <laughs> there was a couple extras. <laughs> um, it's, um, it's a lot of fun. Um, uh, it's, we try to um, you know, be honest members of the community, give back as much as we can through ShmooCon. So um, it's, um, anyway, you can ask other people that have been. If you haven't been, it's a good time. We really enjoy it, and we really enjoy having people show up. Uh, we have dates now, February 5th through 7th, 2010, again at the Warburg Park Marriott in DC. Uh, CFP will be open by the end of the month. Um, and you can follow ShmooCon on Twitter or go to ShmooCon.org for more info as it's released. But you can expect the CFP will largely be like the CFP that we had before and most other hacker cons have as well, which is have a cool project, submit a rational write-up, you might get in. So, um, Anyway, that's humiliation. lots of humiliation. <laughs> this is kind of a scattershot, sawed-off shotgun of a talk, um, but we appreciate you all showing up. Um, there's a lot of information here. I mean, there was just source code that we just, you know, washed over, whatever. Um, you know, feel free to download this presentation. Feel free to download some of these cheats uh, from the places that we reference. Have fun with them. Get yourself an extra Steam account, though, when you do, because you might get your ass banned. Um, but it, it's, it's really interesting because, as Logan pointed out, you know, this isn't just a cheating thing. If you can write a cheat for, that gets past VAC, you can write malware that gets past antivirus, right? It's the same techniques. We're doing the same tricks to get past VAC as we are to get past McAfee and Semantic and whatever else. Um, and so it's kind of you're killing two birds with one stone, right? You're getting your rocks off, blowing people up while you're playing a video game, and you're learning how to write malware. So it's like a double whammy. Who wouldn't do this? It's like an introductory course to malware. Um, Giggle, giggle, quack. All right, I think that's it. Um, if you guys have questions, you can uh, catch us later on at the TF2 tourney where Logan will still be writing code. I uh, appreciate you guys showing up. Oh, run, run!